Hi. So how are you? I'm doing good. Today's one of those crazy busy days where we're running all over the place and doing everything. So I'm like, okay, I have 15 minutes until I have to be back. And my husband's like, okay, let's go hurry. So I am so grateful that you're taking the time. I'm sorry that you're like busy and this is, you know, taking part of your day, but I'm grateful that you're willing to talk to me and give me your take on, um, I'd love to hear your carnivore story or anything that you want to share about that, but also specifically about anxiety. Cause my hope is that we can help other people make their way. And I know diets one piece, obviously, but I think it's a big piece that people, um, they really just don't understand that their, their mood is directly tied to their food. So, yeah. And for me, that's, yes a hundred percent my story. Yeah. There's, um, I grew up, um, and on at the age of 13, I was actually placed on birth control pills because my cycle was so bad and so messed up. I would actually throw up whenever I would have my period, I would get migraines. I would miss school. Mm -hmm. My emotions were all over the place. Mm -hmm. And this is genetic. It runs in my family. My mom had the exact same symptoms. So she was also, uh, medicated really young. So at 13, I went on the, uh, on birth control pills Mm -hmm. and then I was okay until I decided to have kids. And then I had my first child. Uh, I was 22 and I was okay. You know, pretty, pretty good. And then after my second one, I ended up with severe postpartum depression Mm -hmm. and they put me on Zoloft. Right. And they said, you know, we're just going to do it for a little while until your hormones regulate and you'll be fine. You know, and they said, but since you have a history and your mom, you know, there's a chance you might not be able to come off of them. So I ended up being medicated with six different antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So from the time my second oldest was born, um, I was medicated and I never in a million years thought that food had anything to do with it. Right. And no one tells us that like that's not mentioned. Right. No. And they always say, well, you know, it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. And so it doesn't affect your brain. I can tell you that it really does. Uh, what ended up happening was I got a divorce and then I remarried and I ended up getting pregnant, which I wasn't supposed to be able to, Mm -hmm. uh, because I had had a uterine ablation and they said, you'll never get pregnant again. Not don't ever get pregnant again. Mm. So that was a story in itself. Um, I was hospitalized with help syndrome for 21 days before she was born She was born nine weeks early. So she was in the hospital for a month. Uh, We brought her home at four pounds. Wow. So that was a whole lot of stress anyways. Well, then I needed all of my meds replaced because I was completely maxed out on three of them. Right. Right. You know, highest dose that you, so they're like, okay, let's, let's switch over some meds so we can see if that helps better. So we switched over and put me on new medicine. My, my youngest was, I want to say six weeks old, something like that. Right. And at that time I was actually gluten-free. Yeah. So you had made way to some uh, nutrition. I was starting to realize that it had affected it. Like I actually ended up having a heart ablation done Mm -hmm. prior to that. And we figured out later, it was every time I got gluten my heart would go so irregular that I would start skipping every other beat. Uh-huh. So I would drop down to 30 beats a minute and then I would pass out. Right. And so they thought it was this one spot in my heart. So they went in and they did the ablation and it didn't, you know, it, it helped a little bit, but not the way, you know, it didn't fix it the way they wanted it to. Right. So we're going to the doctor mm-hmm. to go see me on my new meds. And we live about 40 minutes away from the doctor's office. So we stopped at an Arby's to get food. And, you know, I'm six weeks postpartum breastfeeding. Brother kids. Yes. Yes. I've got all these other children at the house as well. 
So, and she's got colic, severe colic. So she's not sleeping. Right. And so we pick up Arby's and we tell them, you know, no bread, just put it in a bowl. We're driving away. I've got like 20 minutes to get my, to my appointment. So I look and I open up the container and I look at the meat and you can see that the little bread pieces. So I'm like, they put it on the bun and then they took it off and then they put it in the bowl. I'm starving. We don't have time to turn around. So I eat the meat. Well, every time I got gluten, I would have a massive anxiety and panic attack. So lucky me, we're on the way to the psychiatrist. So we get to the psychiatrist's office and I'm sitting there and I start to hyperventilate Yeah, and I realize it's coming and there's nothing I can do about it, which of course makes me panic even more. So I get into her office and I'm just bawling my eyes out and she looks at me and she looks down at my little baby sleeping in the car seat and looks at my husband and says, how often does this happen? And we tried to explain it's only when I got crass contamination from gluten. Mm-hmm. She is plant-based yeah. she promotes plant-based. So she absolutely did not believe that gluten had anything to do with it at all. Right. So she leaves the room and she comes back in. And she says, it looks like you could use a break, Amy. And I was like, well, I mean, probably because I'm barely sleeping. The baby's got colic X, Y, Z. She says, that's what I thought. The sheriff's deputy will be here in a few minutes to take you to the ER. She called a 5150 on me. Um. She called a suicide watch on me. So we're trying to explain that. That's not that we know what it is. I'm okay. And it's only because I got gluten. She absolutely would not hear it. So then you're hospitalized. Did you end up getting hospitalized or Uh, they kept me for three days at the facility, uh, which was almost two hours away from where we were. Uh And, um, I barely ate while I was there because I was terrified of getting gluten again. Cause if I had had an episode there, right. I'm like, there's no way. So I barely ate. I slept a lot. And I was asked by two people that were admitted there, you know, do you work here? Cause I was actually very happy. And I was asked by a nurse, why are you even here? Right. And so I explained, you know, what happened. And she kind of looked at me like, maybe you are crazy. I guess it's a good thing you are here. Right. Of course, you know, they did finally let me go after my three days. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I've got this on my record forever, you know, it never goes away. So I get out and I'm like, okay, I I have to find a way to be happy. I have to find a way to come off of these meds because they're literally controlling my life. And I'm thinking if I can just lose the weight, cause I'm almost like 275 pounds at this point in time. Okay. And I'm thinking if I can just lose the weight, I'll be happy. Right. And then everything will be fine. And the only thing I haven't tried is keto because I didn't even know carnivore was a thing at this point in time. All I knew about was keto and I'd been resisting it for over a year. I'm going, it's a fad diet. Nobody is going to, it's not going to work. I'm not going to do the fad diet thing. Not going to. So I get out and I go, fine, fine. I'll try it. Just whatever. I'll try anything at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So I go keto and Mm -hmm. about six months in. I woke up one morning and I looked at my husband and I said, I think I can come off of my meds. I said, something is different. Like I can feel it. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just know. And he looks at me, he goes, please no. Right. He's like, we, we've already been through this once. So, um, he, he was like, no, please. And so I said, no, really, there's something different. So we talked to my doctor who said, the only way you're doing that is if you go completely vegan. And I said, well, I I tried that remember, (laughs) and it didn't go well. And she was like, well, I no, I don't think it's going to work. You're going to be on these meds for the rest of your life. She was like, if you were to try, you would have to come off of them very slowly. Otherwise you're going to cause permanent brain damage, but it's not going to work. So good luck and hung up on me. So I Googled what happens if you come off your meds too fast. Right. And sure enough. Yeah. You can cause actual physical brain damage. Right. And 
that in itself was terrifying because I was like, no one told me side effects of being on these medications and consequences of not taking them properly. Right. So I very slowly started to wean myself off of my medications. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no problems. I had no symptoms, no side effects, no nothing. And over the next six months, I very slowly came off of my medications and I thought that I was golden. I was perfect. Everything was wonderful mm-hmm. until November of 2019, our niece mm-hmm. suddenly passed away Okay, and it hit me a lot harder than I thought it should. Wow. And I started to feel some of those same feelings of getting depressed and anxious. I was starting to obsess over my own children again. Right. Which is understandable. understandable. But still, you can tell because you've been through it that there was mm-hmm. something. I was like, there's something yeah. off and okay. it's starting to worry me a little bit. And then, and I told him, cause we'd already, we just found out about carnivore about three months prior to that. Okay. So you'd and been was, keto that whole time? Just keto, the, keto. Just keto. And so then I started to feel myself slipping a little bit more and more down towards the anxiety right. and the depression, even being keto. So I had already said, come January, I'm going to go carnivore just for 30 days for the fun of it, just Mm -hmm. to see what happens. And then that happened and she passed away. Mm -hmm. And I said, forget January, I'm doing it now. Right. So mid-November of 2019, I went carnivore because I wanted to see if it would help that last little bit of my mental ability to be able to cope with things better. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause and it, life never changed. No, it's just this ability to kind of meet life on life's terms. Mm-hmm. You can just feel the difference. And I was starting to go, I wonder if I have any Xanax left. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. wonder if there's any Adderall left because I can feel the panic building up inside. And I went, no, I don't want that. Right. And I had, I had heard a lot of people like Dr. Georgia Ede yeah. talking about, inflammation in your brain. And so I watched her video descent into madness Mm -hmm. and I went, okay, if I cleaned it up this far to keto and Mm -hmm. I felt better, quite a bit better. I mean, enough to come off meds after 15 years, not including, you know, the, the birth control pills before that. Right. I went, what's it going to do if I just give my body building materials, how much better could this get? If I just give it building materials and fuel. Right. So I went carnivore Mm -hmm. and within two weeks, the anxiety was completely gone. Mm -hmm. All of that pressure that I felt that was starting to sit on my chest again, the worry that I have for all of my children, because we're blended. We have nine kids total. (laughs) Well, yeah, I've got just a little bit going on. Um, and we've got two in the military Mm -hmm. and, you know, so it's like, being worried about all of these kids. I have so many things to worry about and all of that just disappeared. And Mm -hmm. I felt so free and so much better and so much clearer than even I felt when I was keto. So even though they were healthy plants, I still don't do well on plants. So I did 30 days of uh, carnivore. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm gonna do another 30 days. So I did another 30 days of carnivore. And then I went, I wonder, can I have cabbage? Because Mm -hmm. cabbage is a superfood, right? I should eat the cabbage. Yeah. I'm still learning at this point in time, you know? Right. Of course. It's a trial and error, right? A hundred percent. So I had a bite of cabbage, Cabbage. Mm -hmm. cooked cabbage at that. And it did not sit well. I woke up the next morning. I had been on the toilet for four hours the night before with severe stomach cramps. Okay. All of my joints hurt. I felt like jello. Hmm. Everything hurt. And I went, okay, cabbage is a no. <laughs> the next one I tried was broccoli. Broccoli mm-hmm. was similar. And I went, you know what? I love meat. I love eggs. I'm, just, I'm done. Yeah. I'm just okay. going to say. So now I can have like cauliflower. I can have a little bit of cauliflower. I tried cauliflower. Other than that, I do spices mm-hmm. and meat. And okay. I, and and egg. good. And you're good with eggs? 
I'm good with eggs. I can also do dairy. Um, okay. I try not to do too much dairy because dairy is generally made from milk. And the purpose of milk is to make small animals as big, as fast as possible. Right. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm good. I've lost 120 pounds. Wow. And uh, there's a Charles Washington. He has yeah. a saying, uh, the lucky ones get fat. Mm -hmm. And I wholeheartedly believe that because had I not been overweight, you would, I would not, I would not have tried have keto. To you. I know that's, mm -hmm. and I think that's why a lot of the people that could be really helped with their mental health, if weight is not an issue, because weight is a huge motivator. That's how most people find keto carnivore. So do you check ketones? Are you paying attention to ketosis or you just eat the meat and the eggs? and some dairy and that's so what I did in the beginning when yeah. we were keto we have the keto mojos oh yeah I, got my I would there. yeah yeah I would absolutely check all the time yeah and I wanted to know after I ate something what did it do and you know if I whatever I was manipulating I could get my ketones up to 5.9 oh so very significant ketone numbers um my blood sugar would mm -hmm. drop down to like 53. Um, it would drop down to like 53. Okay. And I feel fine, but I had no hypoglycemic symptoms whatsoever. I okay. felt completely fine. At one point in time, I was wearing a CGM just for fun, you know, yeah, to yeah. see what was going I, on. Cause it's fun. And they called me and they said, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm fine. Why? And they said, because your blood sugar is at 53. You need to sit down. And I said, I'm a carnivore. I don't need to sit down. I'm fine. Really? And there was just this silent beat on the other end of the line. <laughs> and it was like, no, I'm really okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And I find that that's an interesting piece too, because I think sometimes whatever our numbers the, within the normal limits. And so even blood work or watching these numbers, I'm not sure if they even make sense for carnivores because we just don't have the data. I don't know what our normal within normal limits really are. So for me, it's how do you feel? And if mm -hmm. you're feeling good, I still think it's fun to, I mean, I just like, and I, but I think it can be a little obsessive. Um, I mean, it can be a little bit of an addiction to like checking numbers and, you know, figuring out your macros. And I'm really not about measuring things. Mm -hmm. I just go on how people feel. But if you were, so for people who are kind of maybe carnivore curious, but have a lot of anxiety, do you have some advice for them on like, do you think folks do better? I see. I went from paleo straight to carnivore. I skipped. I just, mm -hmm. I just went right. I was like, oh, I don't feel good. I've got rash all over my legs. Something's got to change. But I'm just wondering if you have some advice of like, do you think people should baby step it or all in or? I think it completely depends on your personality. Yeah, absolutely. It, de it depends on what you have going on. How much healing do you have to do? How much time do you want to spend healing? Mm -hmm. Are you a person that has to make little adjustments and get those adjustments to stick before you can take slightly larger steps? Or can you literally go overnight? Okay, that's it. I'm done. And this is the new plan from here on out and jump in feet first. Uh, my cousin, actually her family just went keto uh, about three months ago because she watched me lose all this weight. And I'm talking about getting off my medications and she's starting to have more and more anxiety. And she's thinking, and I did a, an interview with her and she told me to my face, she goes, I thought you were crazy. She goes, I thought for sure you were nuts to say that food was impacting you. So she had her own little run in with, oh, we're keto, we're clean eating. And oh, but you know what? We're going to go to the camp. My daughter's working out. So we're just going to eat the camp food for one night. It'll be fine. She had a massive panic attack that night. Huh. And she called me the next morning. She goes, you were right. She goes, I had no idea. So they went straight from um, standard American diet. Uh, they went into keto. They didn't like stair step anything. They literally threw everything in the trash mm -hmm. and went and bought all new keto stuff. Um, so they are thinking about carnivore and she's waiting. She was yeah. like, you know what? If 
this starts to catch up with me again. She was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. And so it really does depend on you. Sure. It, it's, you know, where are you? Are you the type of person that can just cut it all off and be done with it? Yeah. I think both instances can be very beneficial to different people. Right. I think so too. And if I think one of the hardest things for me was believing that, that it was going to work because I think we're all, we all believe that we need fruits and vegetables. And then, and I used to teach gut health from that perspective, like that we needed make fruits and vegetables king. And now I'm absolutely, obviously we don't need them, but it's hard for people to realize that it's not only part of the problem, it could be the problem. I mean, you were talking about the cabbage experiment some people really do not do well with the vegetables um, or fruit or any of the plants, just don't do well on the plants. Um, but I think it's hard for people to wrap their brain around that. Uh, yeah, the way I like to explain it to people who come from, no, we have to have fruits. We have to have vegetables. I say, okay, give me any fruit, any vegetable, and tell me about the nutrients in it that are so good. So you get to hear about, you know, what about an orange? It's got so much vitamin C. Right. And I go, you are absolutely right. It does have vitamin C in it. However, let's look at the rest of it. What else is in here that could be affecting you? And so we'll break it down right. and I'll say, okay, but it's got all these anti-nutrients. So we've got this little vitamin C percentage down here. Fantastic. But then we've got 80% over here of these anti-nutrients or tons and tons of sugar right. that is affecting you in negative ways. Not to mention the fact that this is in a form that you may not be able to absorb. Are you a good converter? Right. Because beta carotene in carrots, fantastic, right? If you can't convert it, it See. does no good for you. Yeah. Calcium in spinach and kale, fantastic calcium levels. What else do they have? Oxalates. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you don't even access the calcium. Right. So that's when I, I'll usually bring up a chart that Craig Emmerich created about yeah. the superfoods in the plant world versus beef and beef liver. Right. There's no comparison yeah. at all. And calcium, just eat your eggs, you know, and things like that. So that is one thing that people don't hear is what about the negative parts? They only focus on the one little good part. I know, but they and just don't know. <laughs> exactly. Not the rest of it. Right. So do you eat, um, is there anything that you really can't eat or did you ever have an aversion to any of the meats? The, oh gosh, what was it? Three months ago, mm -hmm. my husband and I decided to do beef only. We yeah. really wanted to try a beef only challenge. And we just gotten a new cow and it was actually a leaner cow. Oh. And so we were like, you know, if we got to add butter, you know, that's fine. And we were kind of playing around with the lower fat and the higher protein just to see what would happen. Sure. Cause I love to check in and manipulate some things and see right. what happens after the third day of eating this specific cow only, I was attempting to finish a, a couple of pieces that night. Mm -hmm. And I was almost gagging on it, trying to finish it. So the next morning I wake up and I go to eat it and I'm physically gagging. Okay. And then I realize that I'm covered head to toe in hives. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So I ate it for another day. I kind of forced my, I didn't eat much. I mean, it was maybe half a pound and then that was it. And I was not hungry at all. Cause I told myself it's just this beef. And it was like, well, if it's just this beef, then I'm done because I can't, I can't eat it. Woke up the next morning covered in a totally different kind of hives. Hmm. I don't know if it's the breed because it's a Holstein. I don't know if it's the processing. I don't know if maybe they added something to it. And didn't say anything. Maybe there's cross. I don't know. Maybe they aged it for 28 days instead of the typical 14 or less. Right. Maybe I had a severe histamine reaction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ever since then, I have barely been able to eat red meat, mm. which is so frustrating. Yeah. I can do ground beef. 
if okay. it's got spices on it and a lot of butter. Okay. But other than that, it's tough. Like my husband made a couple of steaks the other day. He's like, do you want to try? I was like, I'll try. And so I took a bite and I ended up spitting it out. And I was like, I can't even swallow it. Yeah. I get amazing. I mean, I've been that way with chicken. Like I couldn't even swallow it. I had to spit it out. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I like variety. Like I want to be able to eat everything. And I'm sort of that person that, you know, when the zombies come, mm-hmm. I want to heal to the point that we can eat whatever's left on the planet to eat. Um, yes. And I'm all for food freedom. But I just, I, I feel my best right now on ruminant meat. Mm-hmm. And that's just, so I, I think that piece is really hard for people too. If it happens in the beginning, you think your body doesn't like meat or can't um, absorb the meat or can't digest the meat or whatever. And people don't realize just switch the meat, like go to something mm-hmm. else. Some people like Georgia Eve, who I love by the way, but Georgia does much better on, you know, like fowl. I think she does eat some fish. So people don't realize they don't have to eat the red meat. It's just mm-hmm. a lot of us find that we feel better when we're eating steak because we can have yeah, more. And then there's me who does not feel better eating steak. Right. Uh, we have a ton of venison. It's deer season right now. And we actually work for a game preserve. Mm-hmm. And so the hunters come and they'll hunt and we are processing all of the meat. And a lot of times they're like, Oh, we only want to take half of it. Yeah. So, you know, we have the other half of the meat. So we have tons of venison okay, you. starting, right. So I'm starting to make tons of venison recipes. Uh, I'm actually posting them all on my channel. Cause I'm like, here, this is what you do with your venison now. Um, so that, that I can do mm-hmm. better okay. than cow. Okay. Um, I've never, ever, ever liked lamb or goat. Okay. So I'm like, I'm doing a lot of eggs. I'm cool. doing a lot of fowl, different things. Uh, when I was covered head to toe in hives, mm-hmm. I had a really suspicious, um, tick bite as well. Okay. So we weren't sure if maybe it was Lyme or alpha gal. Mm-hmm. So I cut out all ruminants and all dairy okay. for about two weeks, just to let my body rest and calm down. Cause in three years of being healthy, eating keto or carnivore, I had never had a rash. I had never had any other symptoms at all. So it was like, this is way out of the norm for me. And it was, it was pretty scary. So for two weeks, I backed off of everything. And then I bought, brought in butter to see how I did with butter. Mm-hmm. And then I did cheese and then I got tested and everything came back negative. Okay. So it was just that one darn cow. However, I didn't get the, uh, I just talked to Craig Emmerich mm-hmm. and he was saying, you really should get the galaxy labs test. He was like the way that they test. And this other one can be up to 70% inaccurate for Lyme. And I went, Oh, darn. Yeah. So you, so you oh. be testing some more. Yeah. Because the, the first day my right. neck had gotten so stiff, I couldn't turn it right or left. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe, I don't know. but at least, you know, you're actually on the best diet for any of these things. And if yes. it's Lyme, then, you know, so you just kind of, but the anxiety, no more anxiety. No. And what's funny, I'm actually cooking for all the deer hunters Mm -hmm. and I'm cooking standard American diet because if someone's diabetic and I make them a safe protein lasagna, and then they think, oh, I need to go take my insulin. Right. I'm going to kill somebody. So I'm not doing that. I mean, I I offer that if anyone is interested in, you know, me cooking them keto, low carb, if they have any allergies, I can do any of that, but everyone's like, no, just make the food. It's awesome. So it's, it's a little tough, but I'm cooking with a lot of seed oils, vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, truly believe it is starting to affect me just from the cooking alone Mm. because like it smells or that just being around it and having your hands mm-hmm. in it mm-hmm. because, uh, the, I've actually started wearing gloves because mm-hmm. I make enchiladas and I make them with corn tortillas and I fry them in vegetable oil first, just a second on each side, but the oil is on the stove right underneath my nose. And the smell of it is nauseating. And it's like, well, if the smell is getting into my nose, what other chemical compounds are getting into me? 
because my anxiety started to tick up over the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, I think it's really to the point where even the scent alone is getting to me. So I'm considering wearing a mask when I make that dish because I was laying in bed the other night obsessing over the most ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, this makes no sense. This should not be bothering me. And I'm, you know, uninflamed enough to realize that there's a problem and that's the only option that I can think of. Right. Right. That makes sense. That connection. And when you're that in tune, you can usually pick up on it, but I'm Mm -hmm. also, are there any other things, any other advice for people, things that actually, so we know what might trigger the anxiety is even just being around it, cooking with the seed oils, cooking any other either triggers or things that definitely help. I know those are two separate questions. So whichever one feels like the one you might want to. Right. It depends. Yeah. There's some people who cannot even walk into a restaurant and, you know, be able to maintain their diet. If you are one of those people who will get triggered by seeing the baked potato, I strongly Mm -hmm. recommend that you stay home for months. Mm -hmm. And you stuff yourself as much as you can until you are satiated, until you look at a pile of bacon and you go, Oh, I can't even right now. Mm -hmm. Then you can start, you know, going out to eat. If you're going to go to an event, something like that. When we first started keto, we stayed home for two months. We didn't go out to eat. We didn't go to any events, nothing. Mm -hmm. Now I actually take almost all of our own food whenever we go somewhere. Right. Yeah. We've discovered steak in a cup. Oh yeah. It is phenomenal to put your medium rare cubed up steak into your coffee cup, like your Yeti. Yep. It'll hold for like an hour and then it sits there and marinates in its own juice and it is decadent. Maybe I should try that again. I should try that. Maybe I could handle that one. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The other thing you should not do is get your labs drawn in the first six months of beginning any new diet, but especially carnivore. Right. Um, and I actually have my, my lab panel pulled up so Mm -hmm. I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, because I am on YouTube, people ask questions Mm -hmm. and I want to be as transparent as I possibly can be with my health and what's going on. Sure. So I had, uh, all of my labs done. And of course, I am a lean mass hyper responder. So my cholesterol numbers would give just about any regular doctor a heart attack. Yeah. My Uh, my total cholesterol is 337. Oh, wow. Yeah. My LDL is 241. Mm -hmm. Not bad. My triglycerides are 57. Mm -hmm. My HDL is 89. Mm -hmm. And my VLDL is seven. And my CAC score, which I just got a month and a half ago is zero. Right. Right. So what's fantastic is I actually have a doctor who understands keto. He doesn't know too much about carnivore. He's just starting to learn. That's okay. And so he messaged me my results and said, do you have any history cholesterol panels that we could base this off of? So I responded with you know, I'm not worried at all because of people like Dave Feldman and Ivor Cummins. And if you would like any information, I will gladly send it to you. And then I referenced the Framingham study that Mm -hmm. shows that if your LDL is hundred or 220, your risk is about the same as long as your HDL is excellent. Right. And so he responded with, I love how well read you are on this. Congratulations. You are now protected from Alzheimer's and dementia and right. all kinds of other problems. And I also oh, don't get sick. sick. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm almost always never sick either. Mm-hmm. As long as my LDL is higher. And I, I believe it's David Diamond. I can't remember for sure. Mm-hmm. That's looking into the connection between your immune system and your LDL. Oh, But a lot of people are starting to see this like over in Italy, um, a lot of older people with really high LDL have 
no problems with so many things. They don't get the pneumonia. They don't get the bronchitis. They don't get Alzheimer's and dementia. They don't get the hip fractures. They don't get so many things. Mm -hmm. So it's, we are, we are a strange breed and nobody really knows what we should look like. And I think that these numbers are actually a lot more common. That's my, I mean, that's my take just from people who are sharing now, because there are more of us that are saying, and I think in the forums, you know, some of us are like, wait, should my cholesterol be this high? And everybody's like, yeah, we're all, here's what you need to worry about. Um, it is interesting though. Some people, their triglycerides keep rising. And I think that that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. And I've heard, um, have you, oh, what's his name? Oh, darn. I can't remember his name. Um, no, it's not sideways. Oh, shoot. It'll, it'll come to me in a minute. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about it's his, his PE, the protein to energy ratio. Mm-hmm. That guy cannot think of his name. He talks about the fact that for some people, if they eat too much fat, yeah, then it will raise their triglycerides way too much mm-hmm. because the fatty acids Uh, once they break down the way, and he goes into the science behind all of it. And he's like, there is a subset of people that if they eat too much fat, their triglycerides go through the roof. Right. And with how much fat I eat for my mental health, yeah, I was really wondering, well, and then I also do drink coffee. That is the one, you know, plant food, the water that touched the beans um, that I do consume. I've taken it out for 60 days. Mm -hmm. I brought it back in. I've done decaf. I've done, you know, back and forth. And I, I do that. I check in once in a while and I'll just take it out for a month or two just to make sure and to see how I respond for the most part. I'm fine right now. I really enjoy waking up early in the morning and sitting out front, watching the dogs play in the cold with my husband on the porch, drinking coffee, Yeah, you know? And so come summertime, maybe I'll cut it out again and it it won't be a big deal, but I was worried about the coffee raising my triglycerides as well. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I was very happy to see that they were nice and low, even mm-hmm. with the higher fat and then the coffee. Yeah. Cause it does seem, you know, I think everybody has to play with those macro ratios a little bit and see if they do better with protein. But most people that I've worked with, with anxiety do better on a high fat, low carb, whatever that might look like. Like it doesn't necessarily even have to be keto or carnivore that they're working towards if they just start raising good fat and lowering some of their carbs. And I think everybody knows that sugar and refined carbs are bad, but I don't think they, they don't put together that the plants, they've got to also pay attention to how the plants are making them feel. Um, So it's a lot for people. And I think, you know, you got to start where you can start, but also like sitting on the porch, having a ritual that you love, where you, your morning ritual, I think those are important too. It's not mm-hmm. just the food, but I think the fact that people can use food in a way that they can then get off their meds makes a huge difference because then I think you can, the lifestyle stuff that you, that we, you therapists always teach, but you can learn it from anywhere mm-hmm. are easier to do when your brain is working better. Like you don't remember to do the breathing exercises and to, and it just mm-hmm. feels overwhelming when you are miserable and you feel awful all the time. Yes, so. absolutely. My, my sweet cousin, she mm-hmm. was like, I will never, ever, 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 ever go back. She's like, yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it she, again. What did she have bread? Did she have gluten? Or so she- they used to be vegan. Oh, And their entire plate was potatoes and pasta and rice and, you know, with some toppings and some other veggies and the stuff on the side. Yeah. And so, you know, of course there's weight gain that comes with that, but then the crushing anxiety and depression. Yeah. Is this the same cousin that just went on the camping thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so she, uh, they just went out to eat and she got what she thought was a clean steak. Yeah. Oh. But those darn seasonings that they use in restaurants sometimes have MSG in them. The oil that they're cooking your steak on the grill with is going to be seed oils. Right. And I think that those stinking seed oils are actually a lot more dangerous than people let on and that, that we know. I think you're right. And I think, um, 
Like even if people just did that, if people could get rid of the seed oils, I think we would see better mental health in folks. Yep. That's yep. Get rid of those first. And then let's, let's look at the sugar <laughs> and then let's go ahead and look at these grains. Yeah. And then, and that's for some people, that is the stair step that needs to happen. I know. And yeah. for other people, just chop it all off and just eat meat. It's fine. Well, because some people really, I'm mindful of our time too, because I know you've got a lot to do. Um, but some people really realize maybe before, maybe after that they're actually an addict. Mm -hmm. And so when you eat any plants, it contributes. If you are a sugar and carb addict, it can make it extremely difficult to cut out the other stuff. And people think something's wrong with them. And again, they're not looking at the fact that it's the fruits and vegetables that are actually creating. And I think it's partly, could be the anti-nutrients, but I also think it's also messing with the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And so we already know, you know, that that matters to the microbiome. But I think that the, some of those bacteria, maybe even fungi are like, angry when we cut it out and then they get aggressive. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and the, the connection between the gut and the brain, yeah. again, I don't think we fully understand how imperative it is to get our bodies in alignment because it does affect our brains so much. Right. And just, there's so much that we don't understand. I think so much was lost yeah. over the generations of things that people it's like corn, mm -hmm. you know, when we first came over here, Columbus brought back corn, but what he didn't bring back was the way to make it edible and processable for people because they used to let it soak in lye ash so mm -hmm. that it would break the corn down into a way that we would be able to use it. And then they would turn it into a tortillas and then they would eat it and then they would actually use it. Mm -hmm. in their bodies and it could provide different nutrients for them. Plus it wasn't the GMO stuff that we have now. Right. But there's so much that's been lost and it's like, there's so much more that we are just starting to rediscover that we didn't even know we knew before. Right. Right. And I think there's so much more for us to learn, um, about the microbiome. I don't think we're even are close to knowing everything we need to know about or not and using hand sanitizer that right. will kill your microbiome and antibacterial soaps and right. sprays and those right. darn scented candles. I think that they all. Oh, I'm big on the phthalates. I mean, that is, we, it's a known endocrine disruptor, but it's also, I mean, it increases people's anxiety and they're, they have no idea that the candle, those plug-in things that people, mm -hmm. those are so toxic. The neuro. Yeah, if you can smell it, yeah. it is affecting your brain in some way. I'm sorry. It just is. Yeah. And so, I yeah, I would, that's actually super simple. If you can mm -hmm. smell it, it's affecting your brain. So you might want to figure out what's in it. Um, yeah. Cause right now I'm using unscented tallow all over my body. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm much happier than any other things that I've tried. It yeah. just, it seems to work, but you know, I used to love all the all the things, oh, the frou-frou lotions and the, the shampoo that makes you smell like a mango and oh yeah. Yeah. All of it. Nope. It's all gone now. We do natural, absolutely everything. And I'm trying not to overwash right. and not be over afraid. I, I want my kids to experience bacteria. I tell them to go outside Get and play in the dirt. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? Go, go play because there's stuff in there that is so beneficial for you. And it's going to strengthen your immune system. And it's going to teach your body how to fight things off when they show up. Right. Right. So I guess any other just last little tidbits in terms of mental health for folks, anything you would want, you think is important for us to know? Sleep is also very, oh. very, very important. Yeah. Um, one thing at a time for some people, for other people, you can tackle, tackle multiple things at the same time. Right. Um, figuring out your diet is a huge part of that. Trying things, telling yourself, you know what, just for 30 days, it's just 30 days. I could commit to 30 days, whether it be paleo or keto or mm -hmm. carnivore. Yeah. 30 days is not going to kill you in any of those realms. 
whatsoever, but you may see significant improvements in those 30 days. You may not even realize that you see those improvements until your 30 days is up and and then you bring something back in. Yeah. And then you feel absolutely terrible. And then you go, huh, that did do something. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next step will do something else. Mm -hmm. Um, Reaching out and finding a community. If you do not have support in your own home of someone that's doing it with you or your family that's doing it with you, finding a community that can build you up, answer your questions about your sky high cholesterol. Yeah. All of those things are extremely important because you're not in this alone. Right. We want to bind together as a village and help one another. Yeah. So that we know that we're not, you know, the only one that's struggling with this one thing. Cause I guarantee you, you're not. Right. Yes. So yeah, community, sleep, fix what you can fix. Start with 30 days um, with your food. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of my clients start with paleo and, and that's, that's what they feel comfortable doing. And I'm fine with that. A whole foods paleo is a great place to start. Um, mm-hmm. To me, it doesn't cure. It's, it helps, but I, I think if you're after a cure, you got to carnivore. I think carnivore is the curing diet. I really, truly do believe that. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm biased. It's that I'm a believer. Right. You've had experience. I've experienced And you also, so you have a YouTube channel, you interview people all the time. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you hear the stories. So. Yeah. And, and I love getting everyone's perspective from the high fat, low protein to the low fat, high protein. And mm-hmm. I love getting that. I eat tons yeah. of vegetables and I'm thriving to the, I can't even look at a vegetable without my skin breaking out. Right. You know, I want to get as many opinions as I can because sure. somebody is going to hear that and go, that's what I'm experiencing. Maybe mm-hmm. that's what I should try. Right. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, if I might reach back out to you if I have questions as I'm interviewing other folks specifically about anxiety, but I appreciate it. And um, anything else you want to add? How people can find you? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, my YouTube channel is Carnivores Angel, apostrophe S, Angel. It's a little T-bone steak with wings. Um, I am also on Facebook and I am on Instagram. I'm trying to be on Instagram. I'm kind of old school and I haven't figured out Instagram yet. Yeah. Okay. But that's how people can find you. So that's great. I'll go find you there too. If I haven't already figured that out. (laughs) Thank you so much.